As gas prices continue to skyrocket, fuel efficiency has become pretty important to the average day consumer. Now, Toyota has decided to fully embrace fuel efficiency and release a Camry lineup that is purely all hybrid. Now, for the first time, you can get an all-wheel drive system with their hybrid technology. So, let's talk about it. This is the 2025 Toyota Camry XSC, and it's bringing a comprehensive overhaul as it enters its ninth generation. The most significant change is the shift to an all-hybrid powertrain lineup, dropping that V6 engine in favor for two hybrid options. Now alongside this, the exterior has been restyled with sharper, more aggressive lines, even drawing some inspiration from the larger Toyota Crown. The interior has also been refreshed, adopting new infotainment technology and premium materials to elevate the overall driving experience. The Camry is pretty well known in the midsize sedan market. Not only is it reliable, it's pretty affordable, and it's also very practical. It is a great commuting vehicle. Now, these have been around since 1982, and over the years, it's been really cool to see this vehicle progress. They've started adding sportier trims, such as the XSE, which is what we have here today. Now the 2025 Camry comes in four main trims, all again offering the hybrid powertrain. You have the LE, SE, XLE, and XSE. Now here's how they kind of compare. They start ranging from $28,000 all the way up to what we have, which is $41,000 fully loaded. Okay guys, as we take a look at the exterior, this thing looks absolutely cool. I'm really happy that we have it in this color because my opinion, this ocean gym with the midnight black paint paired together really nicely, especially on a bright sunny day when you can really see this paint shine. Um, but looking at our headlights here, this looks like they took heavy inspiration or maybe even just grabbed it from the new Toyota Prius. And hey, listen, I am not complaining at all because it looks quite sharp. And I'm really digging the daytime running light just being a curved amber right here. But back to the paint, as we look down to our grill here, you'll notice the mesh is paint matched to the rest of the vehicle. That is going to be specific to the XSE trim. For the lower trims, you can find that that will just be black and the paint match stuff will be on your roof. So I like how they inversed it for this vehicle because it just makes it look a little sportier. As we look just a little bit lower, again, you see some more of those parking sensors. We do have 360 cameras all around because this does have the premium package. Our splitter down here just looks nice and aggressive. And as we come down, look at the hood. We have nice character lines that just come flush with uh, the rest of the panels on the vehicle. Really looking sharp and clean, uh, refined even. As we look at our wheels, standard, we do have 19 inch wheels, but like I said, premium package. So we're gonna get special 19 inch wheels. These are metallic alloy. In my opinion, they look way better than the standard. Uh, but let's move down the line a little bit further. Like I was saying, more of that black that you don't get with the other trims just definitely looks sporty. We do also get a uh, power sunroof, which is cool. Yeah, I'm really digging the absence of chrome here. Uh, in other vehicles, other midsize sedans, we have seen a nice, sporty, sexy vehicle, and I think it's just killed by the chrome because it just doesn't match. Now, one thing I do have to mention though, our side mirrors that are black look great, but they are not power operated. I would have loved to have seen them be power operated, especially at this price point. Now, total weight for our Camry came out to 3,538 pounds. For the wheelbase, it's 111.2 inches. The total vehicle length has been extended just by one inch for the new lineup. And as we come to the rear end, it does look quite attractive, especially with the XSE specific gloss black spoiler. Really looking good here. Again, more black elements, very sharp. Not too crazy about the chrome badging, uh, but it doesn't look terrible. We do have more parking sensors that that have been hidden in here, and again, more LED uh, stuff going on for our taillights. But opening up the trunk here, 
checking out how much space we're rocking with, we have 15.1 cubic feet of space. If you desire some added practicality, you can go ahead, fold those rear seats down at 60, 40 split and kind of throw in whatever you need. Now, if you compare something like this to maybe the new Accord, which sits at 16.7 cubic feet of space, it does lose in the practicality segment, but honestly, not too big of an issue. If we open it up down below here, we do have one jack, but not really any extra storage space. But with that being said, guys, I say we check out what lies underneath the hood. All right, so taking a look at what's under the hood here, this thing is pretty dang heavy, I'm not gonna lie. So for $41,000, I would have expected to see maybe not a prop rod, but honestly, it's not the biggest thing in the world, just kind of an inconvenience. But what's powering this thing, this is a 2.5 liter inline four cylinder engine mated to uh, two electric motors in the front. Now, if you do get the all wheel drive version, you're gonna have three electric motors. But for us, we're gonna be pushing 225 horsepower. Now, without these electric motors, it pushes just 184, but when you combine everything together, you're gonna get that 225. Now, if you go for the all-wheel drive version, uh, which gives you those three electric motors, you're gonna get 10 more horsepower. This whole thing is mated to a CVT, a continuously variable automatic transmission. And uh, gas mileage, you're looking at 48 in the city, 47 in the highway for a combined 47 miles per gallon. Pretty impressive numbers. It's no wonder why this vehicle is just regarded as such a great daily driver. Now with a total full tank of gas, you're looking at 550 miles on a full tank. Again, I've said this a million times, but we've optioned for the premium package in our XSE. This is going to add some pretty great features. In addition to our standard leather perforated seats, we get a ventilated option. We get a 10 inch heads up display, giving you key driving information without having to take your eyes off the road. The package also includes a full 360 degree camera view, which really makes parking this thing a breeze. The cabin is very attractive. Soft touch leather materials are found pretty much throughout. Now, I wouldn't say it's too luxurious, but it really gives the interior a nice refined feel. The headrests are softer than in previous generations, which really makes commuting just a bit more comfortable. Unfortunately, we're missing the small little cubby from the last generation, which was really nice to kind of throw in any spare change or just coins that we had. And while the seats are comfortable, memory seatings are not available unless you upgrade for the XLE trim. The 12.3 inch infotainment screen is standard and it's a big upgrade, about 3.2 inches larger than the previous model. We also have a fully digital custom gauge cluster and dual zone automatic climate control. For charging, you get two USB-C ports, one USB-A and wireless phone charging. As we look at the shifter, it remains pretty similar to the last generation, allowing manual mode, and the paddle shifters work pretty well for controlling this CVT. I am pretty happy to see some convenient features, such as the one touch up and down for the windows and the key fob auto start feature. That's gonna allow you to pre-cool the leather seats on pretty hot days. Drive modes are controlled by buttons, which is a bit unique, and there's an EV mode for low speed electric driving, so you can get nice and smooth. You've got a lot of options to really choose from to make this thing yours. One thing about the interior though, the gloss black materials tend to show your fingerprints, so keeping this thing clean will definitely take some perseverance. As we look at the rear, the layout remains relatively unchanged with 38 inches of legroom. You're gonna get rear AC vents, two USB-C charging ports, and adjustable head restraints. The fold down armrest with the cup holders is pretty nice, standard, and practical. I gotta say, its design definitely reminds me a bit of the Honda Accord. My immediate first impressions taking this thing for a spin is it's nice and smooth and it feels like a Toyota should. It does definitely feel um, well built, you know, uh, you get pure electric power up until 15, 20 miles an hour. You can feel the engine kick on, um, it's just very, very smooth. I can tell the suspension is more of that sport tuned stiffness, uh, which is nice, especially going around corners. I really do feel in control. Uh, going over bumps though, you do get a little bump steer here and there, uh, but it honestly isn't too terrible. Uh, I imagine with the all-wheel drive system, it will be a little bit better. 
Um, but uh, very quiet in the cabin. We're going 65 miles an hour on the freeway here and very, very quiet. When we do put on the JBL sound system, it sounds pretty incredible. I love the way you can just feel the bass in your chest and uh, it just helps make the commute pretty enjoyable, uh, pretty just low key, casual. And I mean, that's what this vehicle is just for. It's commuting, getting to point A, point B, getting great gas mileage and just having the peace of mind that this thing is going to last you. Now in regards to visibility, it has definitely been improved compared to last generation. I can really see out of this big windshield, despite our A-pillars being kind of on the larger side, um, I still feel pretty comfortable, especially with that Toyota Safety Sense 3.0. We get excellent blind spot monitoring. Uh, I can see it in the uh, power operated side mirrors here. It's a shame that they're not power folding, um, like I said when I was talking about the exterior, but it is still nice that we can control it uh, you know, electronically, just can't fold them. Um, but regarding visibility, again, when the sun is directly above the car and it's shining down, I can see some reflections from the heads up display in the windshield. And I can also see some trim pieces from the dash uh, reflecting in the windshield, which honestly isn't too big of an issue. It is still definitely noteworthy. Um, but looking at our heads up display, it is nice and clear. When we first got in this thing, I don't know whoever had this before us, maybe they were just super tall, but I didn't even know this thing had a heads up display because it was positioned so far down. But it was nice to be able to configure it and move it very easily through the settings on the tachometer. The tachometer is fully digital, uh, which you know, I've never really been, the fa a bit, been a fan of just a fully digital tach area. I think it looks more attractive being analog, but it kind of works for this all hybrid lineup of Camrys, and I'm not really complaining. I like how it changes color based on the drive mode that you're gonna throw it in. Uh, sport obviously being red, normal being blue, and comfort mode uh, being like a greenish, um, but the drive modes are very comfortable. Sport mode is honestly kind of impressive for this little Camry here. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's very surprising uh, compared to, you know, the V6 of its past that had a little bit more punch. This kind of focuses more on like low end power because of, you know, the hybrid uh, powertrain. And honestly, I'd say it's plenty of power. I mean, 220 foot horsepower, not the most capable and powerful thing in the world, but I haven't felt the desire for anything more than that. So yeah. Now, one thing I have to say in regards to braking is the brake pedal, I feel as though requires a lot of force to get the vehicle to stop. And you have to maintain that force in order for it to not start rolling when you're at a stoplight. Um, Toyota, I guess, has thought of that being an issue and incorporated this little hold button. So when you go and you stop the vehicle, press that hold button and you can release your foot off the brake pedal and you're not going anywhere. Uh, but it is just definitely noticeable when you're driving through traffic maybe and someone just decides to slam on their brakes. You have to kind of put a little more force than you would think you would need to. Now, in regards to the sunroof, I have to say I'm not too impressed with it. I like the speed in which the shade recedes, but when I'm driving or I'm just chilling and I'm in the driver's seat, I look up, there's not really much I can see. I mean, I'm already close to the, the ceiling anyway. It's kind of an uncomfortable position and just it ends so close to my forehead that it just isn't very practical. Now, for the rear passengers, I think that they could enjoy it a little bit more. So if you have kids back there that enjoy, you know, driving on a sunny day uh, or enjoying the stars at nighttime, they might find some use for it. But there is also this giant cross member that comes across the top here that does block visibility uh, a little bit more. So in my opinion, I'm leaning towards saying it's not really worth the extra penny to option the moonroof unless that's something really important to you and your passengers. Um, it is obviously attractive looking and it's a feature you can say your car has the sunroof, but I don't know honestly if I would pay the extra penny for it. Now for the steering wheel, everything is nice and where we want it, very easy to use. The smudges from the fingerprints are a little bit annoying, but honestly it's not too big of a deal, just keep those hands clean. But the paddle shifters is what I wanna talk about. Now it is a CVT, so it's not going to be like your standard automatic transmission with paddle shifters where you can really get those gears down and, and stop the vehicle, make it sound nice and cool. They do work well, but they don't work amazing. So. I'm driving right now, I'm gonna go down to fourth, 
third, second. I mean, I'm, the vehicle's just not stopping at all. It, you can feel it, you can hear it, but uh, it doesn't really work in the same traditional sense as a standard automatic transmission. So what I really like about the XSE with the premium package is you get full 360 degree cameras. So I just pulled up to this traffic light here and I pressed our little 360 view button and I was greeted to a full panorama of what's around me and what's in front of me. This thing is so handy for going through the drive through I mean, we all know drive throughs are designed so poorly, at least some of them, where you're kind of like, Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to curb my wheel. I definitely don't want to curb my wheel. Well, go ahead and push that button, and you can easily navigate through. And it just makes driving, parking this thing, absolutely seamless. And I'm a definitely a big fan. The 2025 Toyota Camry XSE has proven to be kind of a lot of fun, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it's just the dash of sportiness, the reliability, the fuel efficiency, are you kidding me? I mean, this there's no wonder why this is just such a great seller in the mid-size sedan, just kind of segment. Um, but is it worth $41,000? I would love to know what you guys think about that down below in the comments. Now remember, everything we have said is subjective, so we'd always recommend go to your local Toyota dealership, try one of these Things out for yourselves and then let us know down in the comments if maybe you agreed with some of our talking points. Now remember, if you want a collector car of your own, check out our website at classiccars.com. That's going to be our uh, collector car website with over 38,000 listings live on the site. And also check out autohunter.com, which is our seven day online auction. That's it for me, guys. Thanks so much for watching.